I really appreciate being asked to speak tonight, and um, it, my talk is presented as being on community, and I will get a little into community, but I kind of want to tell you how I got there. Um, I grew up in the 50s in Southern California, and pretty much um, I was told that I could be um, a mother, a nurse, a secretary, or a teacher. That was it. That's even what the book said. And so my mother one day said to me, um, in a very rare instance of sobriety, <laughs> you know, you're going to need something to fall back on. And I looked at her and said, fall back on? I, I didn't know what she was talking about. And she said, well, you know, you're going to be somebody's wife, and then you're going to be somebody's mother. And you don't want to end up like me because I hate your father and I'm stuck here. <laughs> um, not that that was a surprise to me, trust me. <laughs> but it kind of gave me an idea of her mindset. And even as a really young child, I knew there was something wrong with that. Um, it was the beginning of my odyssey of what it meant to be a girl in a culture that really didn't regard girls as equal to boys. I didn't know why or what or even how, but I knew something was wrong. I did better in school than most of the boys, and I could pitch a pretty mean fastball. So mean that in 1958, I got to play on the boys' team as the starting pitcher. <laughs> but pitching for the boys' team didn't really mean equality. Not that I knew that word at the time. It only meant they needed me to win. <laughs> As time went on, I decided I didn't really want to be a wife or a mother. When all the other girls were playing with dolls, I was marching my collection of plastic horses across the floor. <laughs> dolls were not the path I wanted to be on. I read Nancy Drew. I took horseback riding lessons. But sooner or later, I was dating. Earlier vows to the contrary forgotten, I got married at the wise age of 18, <laughs> because I knew everything. And soon I had two daughters. Um, although I, I was a woman, I was a really young woman. I mean, I remember one day my husband and I were going to, we were surfing in Newport Beach in our Volkswagen bus, and the cops pulled us over because they thought I was ditching school. The guy almost fell over when I told him we were married. But I knew when I had girls that their future could depend on my action. I joined the National Organization of Women. I was a charter member. I subscribed to Ms. Magazine, because we all did that. I started a women's consciousness raising group. I lobbied for better textbooks in the schools. And I made sure that my daughters had soapbox derby racers as well as dolls. <laughs> but a defining, and you remember those, you know, those of you that are my age, you remember those years. It's like we were just, you know, that was the bra burning, strident, feminine time. And we were counting, you know, what the, you know, well, if you do these six chores, then I'm going to do these. You know, it was all just sort of very linear. <laughs> But a defining moment came for me one day when I was eavesdropping on my daughters playing with um, their Fisher-Price workbench, <laughs> which had been gathering dust in the corner of the living room since I'd hauled it home from Toys R Us. Its hammers and screwdrivers kind of hung limply at the side with cobwebs on them, completely unused. But one day, I saw my daughters huddled around it. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I was so excited they were finally playing with the workbench. <laughs> so I crept around the corner and eavesdropped on them. And after a few minutes, I realized they were using it as a stove. <laughs> That was the moment that I knew it was more complicated than I understood. <laughs> it wasn't just about toys and feminism. We were hardwired to be girls. <laughs> Equality didn't mean I had to change the oil in the car while my husband changed diapers. But while I was chasing my feminist dream, I kind of lost myself. 
And now, decades later, life has been my teacher. I think when Marilyn asked us to talk about things that inspired us, um, when I was 30 and getting a divorce and had never held a job ever, um, my husband shook his finger at me and said, you will never make it. I'll never, it was the best thing he could have done. <laughs> Bless his heart, it was like raising, it was like waving a red flag in front of a bull. <laughs> I knew at that minute I was going to make it. <laughs> and I did. And you know, it wasn't, it, parts of it weren't easy, but there's, you know, the more I learned to do things for myself and the more I learned to have my own life apart from, you know, a husband who was taking care of me, it, Everything changed, and, and that began to empower me, and in turn, empower my daughters. I have a confession to make. I feel a little bit of a fraud up here talking to you at Gather the Women. Um, my role in the community, to me, is more like the waitress in the popular coffee shop <laughs> or the neighbor who chats over the back fence. You know, I'm, I'm, we have kind of a collective collective conversation sometimes through the newspaper. Um, you know, I'm not starting nonprofits. I'm not saving 6,000 animals. But, but I, I am bringing the community together through my column. And But it's not because of me, it's because of the amazing people in Nevada County. I just, you know, it, tonight it blows me away, but every single day I meet a person that I'm just in awe over. I mean, we live in the most incredible place on earth, I'm convinced. <laughs> and I realize the power the newspaper has, and I do my very best to take that seriously. And what influence I do have, I try to use to do positive things in the community. So I want to tell you that I'm very proud to be here and that I was asked to speak. And thank you so much for having me.